Well, hey there, YouTube. PD Two Finger here, and it was just something kind of funny that happened this morning. I uh, I'm sitting here uh, next to my wife on the couch, and she's got her laptop. I'm just clicking on random YouTube videos and watching them. And there's a channel called channel called Philip Drusden. He's like a Russian guy, and he's kind of one of these conspiracy theorist channels. Um, but he's not. He doesn't. Uh, doom or gloom doom, doom like always predicting that it's the end of the world constantly so yeah i was listening to some queen bee barbecue commercials which if, if you've never heard those they're really borderline racist and i don't know if i should promote that uh it, the guy made them in the 70s they're fake radio commercials for a barbecue restaurant uh Anyway, I somehow or another I found this Philip Dru, Philip D R U Z H I N I N Philip Junin Junin, and it says what's next in 2020, and then yellow badge, and I'm not sure. I haven't finished watching the video. I'm watching some weird Paul, uh, another guy I like to look at his videos, and then Sage of Quay. Sage of Quay has something uh, about the debate was a uh, 911 encoded event. Uh, 911 being the magical number. But I have yet to check out the Battle of the Geezers or the Greatest Clown Show on Earth. Uh, I do I do need to uh, take a look at that and see exactly what transpired for the uh, the debate I'm clicking off some bunch of these okay so I, I'm watching this Philip Drusden video and he's talking about how Russia has been made the bad guy and this is something I can really identify with because when I was a kid I was maybe in kindergarten or pre-kindergarten I was really little my mom we were going to a church to see a movie and the movie was about the end times and it showed an American soil invasion by Russia and they came in they had these guys with the big Russian hats and they were uh, beating down these families they found a Bible and they were assessed they were uh, killing them and like taking them to some concentration camps and they were forcing the one family member to cut the head off of the other family member it was some really heavy duty stuff and i never i never as a four-year-old she might have wanted to wait until after my sixth birthday for that type of material anyway i grew up thinking that the russians were coming and then the nuclear stuff you know I took, I took a quarter ounce of mushrooms. Um, I split that in half. It was, it was way over a quarter. Uh, so I split this quarter ounce of mushrooms in half, and me and my uh, singer uh, tripped at a Roger Waters concert. It was called Radio Chaos, and at the end of that album, there's a, a nuclear event uh, and I had end of the world nuclear, um, end of the world nuclear dreams, nightmares for 10 years plus. And they, they were, uh, they were the type of dreams that just really shake you to your core. So yeah, uh, that recurring nightmare thing is, that's a thing with me whatever the flavor there's been like four or five different themes to why they're so traumatizing and those change over time you know i've had the nuclear thing i've had the uh, ufo invasion the spectacular blue le uh leds ufos <laughs> led uh some other stuff i just don't want to talk about Trust me, they're not good dreams. So, I've kind of been traumatized by this machine, this brainwashing 
of the media. And if you pay attention, you begin to see uh, errors in the script. You just begin to see that we're not being told the truth. That was my reaction to bringing this stuff up and constantly being told that I'm full of it by my wife, <laughs> who's al always the wiser, cooler headed, isn't going to jump to conclusions and see the darkness and the scheming and the underbelly and the negative side of everything like I do. Um, and that just comes from growing up in a family where I had an older brother who was a schemer, who was evil, and he didn't have my best interests at heart. So to grow up under some kind of oppression like that and be constantly abused and harmed and then have uh, uh, be beaten by your father, and that was used against me by my brother. He often used that as whatever he wanted to get he would threaten that thing that, you know, oh, if you don't comply, I'm going to make sure that dad beats your ass. And he could very well manipulate that to happen. So, uh, it, you know, it's no excuse. It is, I am who I am, but I also understand who I, why I am who I am. And I'm not taking any of the blame on that one. And I was born... A very happy, smiling kid that always had us, even as an infant, I was unbelievably, never cried, laughing and giggling all the time. This is what my mom told me. I don't know. Uh, she didn't have the same thing to say about either one of my brothers. So I know she wasn't just making that up to make me feel good about myself. My mom did not do that. <laughs> no. Just the opposite. So... Yeah, I'm checking out this Philip Drozden video, and he's talking about how uh, right now uh, Russia has come back up again, because it was like all of a sudden the wall came down, and it was just a cash grab. They like everyone came in and bought off all whatever weapons were laying around, and if you know anything about Russia, it's just kind of a pay to play, like super shady, like. Everyone that's in power is just skimming off everyone else who makes any money in the town. It's super corrupt. There's no organization. It's just kind of a free-for-all. And yet they've got a lot of the world's wealth as far as natural resources up there. And right now, China, it, it is their sphere of influence is Russia. And the script is more London through the United States is that bank of power, okay? So uh, you see how, you know, it was, okay, Russians are not a threat anymore. We don't have to worry about getting nuked. So then they brought out 9-11. And it was, ooh, terrorists are going to get you. And they sold all these flags. Now... Russia comes back into the scene. And what this guy was talking about, you know, I mean, it's Russia's a threat now. Russia's the bad guy. Something's going to go down. Something's going to happen, and Russia is going to be the bad guy, is what this guy's saying. And he's, I think he's from Russia. I'm not sure. He's not from the United States, this guy. He's Eastern European or Russian. And he's saying that it would be in the United States' interest to... Uh, control Russia somehow a war whatever it would be but to cut off those natural resources from China and that would put China in its place and they wouldn't be this what they are now you know so that would be goodbye to all the uh, 99 cent eBay China stuff that I order <laughs> uh so it's very interesting. He is showing uh, the Rothschild family and the Rockefeller and talking about how they're the right hand and the left hand of this program. And I, ta I'm trying to explain this to my wife. And I started Googling and looking up. He was saying that... Um, 
the Rothschild is going for a gold standard, which that's really, I'm behind that because that offers stability. I understand a little bit about what the Federal Reserve is and the system that we're in, and it's not good. It's just this printing money. I, went, I remember going through as a child, constantly hearing inflation, 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 inflation was all you heard on the news and it was things are bad and you got to worry about financial stuff even in the land of milk and honey and that's that's just wrong with everyone working and how how we were producing so much stuff back then uh somebody was making some money somebody was getting rich off of the back-breaking sweat and labor of the american blue-collar community and none of those people had anything to show for it when I was coming up, I saw all these poor people working their tails off and not and having nothing and being fine with it. So I started typing in to try to illustrate to my wife who these people are and why, like the Red Shield thing and how they own everything. They own all these banks. And none of them come up. It's like Jeff Bezos is the world's richest guy and i'm like where's uh, uh rockefeller where's so i looked into it uh, and it what it is they've distributed the wealth throughout the family and they've hidden all the wealth supposedly the rothschilds came came into prominence with mail order antiques which I'm not buying into that, mail-order children, mail-order weapons pouring into the hood, mail-order uh, hard drug sales, I can, I can believe. I can wrap my head around making money off that, but mail-order antiques? And then you see these suicides, like in 1996, one of these guys, they found him hanging on the end of a rope in a hotel in France. And they're like, yeah, he... He, he couldn't handle being who he was, so he hung himself. You're a Rothschild, and you can't handle... I, I, I just, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that one. Now, I went over to Quora, where I was actually just asking questions in my browser, and it says uh, here... Why does the Forbes list not include the wealthiest families on the planet with net amounts of about $300 trillion, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds? So it says, firstly, the list only contains the wealthiest known individuals, not families. One of the main reasons is the, the, the dilution of wealth across the whole family. The Rothschild family's wealth goes back many years, has been diluted through many generations, so it's impossible to trace it through all these family, family members. And then it's like, secondly, the Rothschild Rockefeller controlled 300 trillion to many would seem as grossly inaccurate. Many would cite around the 500 billion mark. However, this isn't even confirmed. So somebody's saying, oh, yeah, they don't have that much money. It's probably a lot less. And then this other guy says, if you look at it from an educated perspective of finance and you see how, uh, what's his name, the Facebook guy, what's that guy's name? Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg made $62 billion in just a few short years. And that the just on overdraft from ATM, there was $34 billion in one year. But these families are way, way, way wealthier than we could ever imagine. Now, there is $100 trillion in debt floating out there, and it's basically owed to the World Bank families. And the, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, they own the World Bank... <clears throat> and the central banks worldwide or the Federal Reserve. So all of this debt is on them as well. So 
according to Philip Drisden, he's saying that the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers don't always see eye to eye as far as the script. And that that's why some of this stuff doesn't make sense. And that and that really makes sense to me. When they talk about the Illuminati, you know, you're supposed to think of a bunch of guys in cloaks. It isn't. It's just bankers. It's just people that run the world. You know? I mean, what what are you going to do if you're the richest guy in America or the richest guy in the world? Are you going to just sit back and play video games or are you going to try to make some plans and figure out how to survive and how to stay on top of your fortune? <laughs> So at that, looking at it from that perspective, does it? It takes the mystery and the evil and the the, the scheming and the d- demonic presence out of the Illuminati, and it, it's just in fact just these families who are who have been in in power and they know what to do. They're thinking the long game, you know. And the idea that maybe they aren't always in sync, and that sometimes one is doing something that's going to rub the other the wrong way, and it's going to cause them to react in a different way that causes conflict, it makes a lot of sense to me. That really makes more sense than just one plan where everything's laid out perfectly, which leads to all of us being microchip zombies. You know? You know what I mean? So, it's just really interesting. I'm reading about this stuff. I'm learning a little more because I've known about the Rothschild family and I've known about the Rockefeller family ever since I was a kid. And I don't really know much because they, they're they not in... When you read about this stuff, they're not talking about them. They're talking about these mid-level guys. You know, the Amazon guy, Be- Bezos, and who's the kid, the Facebook kid. They're talking about them. They're not talking about the real deal players. And that's smart. That's that's keeping keeping a lot of heat off of your off of your family, and I I completely understand. I wouldn't want people knowing who I was either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, interesting when they show a photo of that guy, his clothes fit him. I I've never looked as good as this guy, and he's like ninety. Like his clothes fit him so good. Like he looks so good in this. It's a white shirt with a tie, a vest, and a just like a cloak that he's got on. Like a trench coat. And I'm thinking, well, he's not shopping at Walmart. You know what I mean? There's probably a computer that has all of his body measurements in it that's taken by laser when he's in his shower. And there's a tailor. And anytime those measurements change, the tailor gets a a signal goes off and he's in there hand-stitching another coat to those exact specifications. Right? I mean, that's that's how I would have it set up. And can you blame the guy? No, I can't blame him. So I'm on Quora. And I clicked on this next thing to learn more. Um, can I move this? No, I can't. And it co- I click on this next thing. I've, I've done like two clicks in on Rothschild. And I go my third click in. And this thing comes up. We found spaces for you. It's grays out everything. I can still kind of see through it, but it grays everything out, and there's a big white thing over really the meat of the page. And it says, we found spaces for you. Quora gets better when you follow spaces. Find ones that match your interests. Music recording. Make hit records. Sing the original song. Music and song promotion. And then it's like music videos. Uh, yeah. K-pop fans. BT's Universe. Army Room. Nature photography. Photographic. Life is beautiful. Foodie frenzy. Health and fitness. So yeah, Quora... <laughs> <laughs> Cora just popped up and didn't want me looking into the Rothschilds. Cora, I'm 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 sorry. I'm not interested in making hit records. I got to be honest with you. Uh, that idea of um, 
what I do quantitating itself into anything of anybody else enjoying it is so far from my uh, reality. Like, no. My self-image is so low. I, the idea of someone honestly liking something that I do, because people just do not care about your music. That's a fact. Unless they're musicians. If it's another musician who's been through the recording thing or knows a little bit about the stuff, then they could they could have an appreciation for a home recording. And I, I'm not I don't want to step on any of the people who comment here when I talk like that. I know it sounds like I mean that way. I'm talking generalization. I'm not talking about people that are nice to me. I'm talking about an eighteen year old guy who or gal who doesn't really have any rock in their collection, who's listening to Cardi B and what would be another good example? I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know. Uh, whatever the big hip hop act of the minute is. Those types of people. That's who I'm talking about when I make general statements. I'm not talking about the good people who are kind enough to say really nice things about the, the work that I put up here. So please forgive me for that. Every time I say something like that, I, when I'm done with it, I'm like, man. You got to stop with that shit because coming from the other perspective of somebody who's taking the time to watch your shit and say something nice, you're just insulting them. So, sorry, I don't mean it that way. I just, I'm talking from a perspective of the big picture of like me being on TV or uh, selling a record and having it chart. There's no way that would ever happen. Okay, no way. And I'm completely fine with that. You know, I that was never, ever, never. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. You learn how to play dueling banjos and you can barely play it. Then you cut your fingers off, the ends of your fingers on your fret hand. It's not looking very good as far as the uh, you're going to be playing eruption. Or Billy Sheehan bass licks. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, uh, when people talk about the Illuminati and all that stuff, oftentimes you've got to try to get past a lot of that uh, hype and uh, exaggeration and speculation and just try to feel for the, uh, the truth. Because just as in along with uh, how much we've been lied to through the media causes people to speculate and think the worst. So somewhere in between there lies the middle ground that is the truth. And that's what we're all searching for. And that sucks because we've got this system in place that easily could provide us with the truth. But what do we get? We get the shit show that was the 2020 debate. And I have to look into that. I really do not want to go political on this thing. Uh, but I think the main thing that we need to understand if we want to keep our sanity is how much do you want to expose yourself to a bunch of lies? So, as a comedian, Bill Burr said, <coughs> excuse me, about a month back, <clears throat> excuse me about a month back I heard Bill Burr and he said something to the effect of he doesn't watch the news he checks in every two weeks and sees real quickly are they wearing the mask or no mask and then he sees that and then he shuts the news off and puts the mask back on and that's called protecting yourself. That's called keeping your sanity. Because if you're like me and you're going to start having nightmares and shit, you can't handle the truth that the media is selling us. And it, so that's... it's It puts yourself in a position of surrendering and you're just... 
you can't do anything. You're literally an ant. And let's face it, we are. So if you're out there and you're waving your flag and you're posting all this, you know, Trump, all this anger, or uh, all lives matter, you know, or what, whatever it may be. If you're influenced by the media and you're, it's affecting your, your soul, your peace, your harmony, your well-being. That's an illness. You're not healthy, and we all deserve peace. As human beings, we need to be in a calm state of mind. And it pains me to see my fellow human beings in a state of duress because Orange Man bad or All Lives Matter or any of the other political memes that are a creation of this system that's in place. So if I'm going to get political, that's my message is... Tune in, turn on, and drop out. <laughs> talk about a manufactured. Uh, talk about carrying the flag for the for the system, because that's exactly what that was. All right, you guys. I could keep talking on this stuff and talking on this stuff, and I'm not gonna do that. Um, do I dare leave the comments on this one? And again, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what you think. And I'm not here, I'm not here to change anybody's... Uh, the idea that you could ever change anyone's p political pedigree through a Facebook meme... <laughs> oh, my Lord. I gotta stop doing that on camera. I rub my... Yeah, I do this all the time. I didn't even have to know what you were doing. Uh, all right, you guys. I love you. Be safe and healthy. Don't touch your face. And don't touch your face. <laughs>